Hey, what's up guys, Tommy here, back again with another video. Today, I'm giving you guys my last update on this electric bike build, and for good reason, that's because it's just about done. And by last update, I mean update in the build process, and not actual, you know, videos on, on the bike itself, just updates, Um, so you know when I'm gonna start posting some good videos on this. But yeah, it's almost done. Um, As you can see, from the looks of it, it looks done, but I'm gonna tell you guys uh, what still needs to be done here, so. First off, this front rotor is okay, but I do believe I'm gonna wanna upgrade it to a slightly larger rotor because I can get away with doing that. This, uh, the way the brake's mounted, especially with the uh, forks I have, um, two oh three millimeter won't work. So I'll probably have to go up a few millimeters. I'm pretty sure they have larger uh, discs than this. What else? I'm also gonna get rid of this rubber stuff on top. I thought it would look cool. Um, but it's kind of peeling off. So I think I'm just going to go with some like thin, you know, sticker vinyl cover. I have some camo, um, at my friend's house. So I might want to try that to see how that looks. But I think I may just order white or black and do that. Also, these pegs are terrible. I thought they would work out, but they don't. So either I'm going to throw some pedals on there or, um, I'm going to try to make a better design or weld something. Um, but yeah, I still haven't figured that out. Sorry about the plane. All right, so what I was saying is coming around to here, I don't really have anything going on right here. Reason for that is my uh, my uh, brake disc spacer was way too uh, long or tall or whatever you want to call it, and it went out to about here. And you know, with the with the brake disc goes out to about here, and then the bolts would just make it so that the wheel wouldn't spin. And if it did manage to spin, it would just rip up the uh, cable. So I had to get a few millimeters shorter, so my new one should be about to here, um, and that'll bring everything out to here, and that should, you know, get it as far away from the motor as possible without, um, you know, ruining anything. So uh, that's what I did, and then I just kind of bolted the uh, brakes to here temporarily so they don't go anywhere. And yeah, that's the update on my bike. Just a few things, um, and I think one more thing on the inside. Um, I'm gonna need to get like a foam block and put it above the battery so it's not moving. Uh, but other than that, that's that's it um, for you know all the main things to get this bike running. Of course, there's always gonna be upgrades and stuff, uh, no doubt about it. But uh, that's the main things to get this thing you know running as comfortably um, as it should. So yeah, um, I'm gonna show you guys how this thing rides. But before we do that, I just want to remind you guys to hit that like button, subscribe, and leave a nice comment so I can make more videos like this. Now let's get right into it. All right, guys, so we got her in some natural light. And uh, yeah, things that are meant to outside to be outside look better outside, shocker. Okay, so turn the bike on like this, show the MB Power logo. Not really sure exactly how you Turn up the brightness as it seems a bit dim in the sunlight here. Um, here we go. So it says so far on this bike, it says we've gone 1.01 kilometers. So yeah, I haven't rode very far on this bike, and we're at 97% charge. Gotta be careful going down here. I believe it rained a little bit last night, so. Gotta be careful. Watch this. Holy shit. We went like uh, 70 kilometers per hour right there. And I, I tested the speedometer last night. It's accurate. Um, I went like 30 kilometers per hour, which is uh, about 16 miles per hour. And, uh, yeah. And, you know, something about this bike, as of compared to, you know, my Suron X, is this bike pulls, you know. It's, it's got pulling power, which is unique. It's unique. I haven't ridden a bike with real pulling power. Doing a bit of off-roading here. But yeah, this thing pulls. Should be able to go about 60 miles per hour with the specs I have. Um, 
Yeah, I said 70 miles per hour in my first initial review, but I'm starting to think that's probably not right. But yeah, if I get 60 miles per hour, I'm happy. Yeah, our GoPro is recording. I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna adjust the angle a little bit. I'll get some turn signals for this bike. Yeah. And this is the first day I can um, really get on this bike and ride it. The um, last few days, I think it was two days ago, I kind of built this thing and had it mostly built like how it is now. And I was just too tired to ride and I didn't have any bike lights and it was night. And then yesterday, I was busy so I couldn't ride it. Let me adjust the GoPro. Make sure everything's still good. So I'm doing a short ride here. Um, I want to edit and post this video at around noon today. Uh, it's actually Sunday right now. So uh, the day you're watching this, I just didn't have time to post the last few days, which is interesting. I always have time to do stuff, but yeah. So we're gonna go up here. I know uh, the road gets blocked over here. So yeah. Absolute rock ship. And I noticed there's a bit of movement near the rear and it's not loosening anything or anything. Um, I just feel like a bit of movement in the rear motor. And like I check it and it's completely tight. What I think is happening is I think the mo motor's moving back and forth a little bit. See, this is a private road. Hey, I'll turn around here. I really like this uh, display, it's nice and big, like a little computer screen. And another thing, I got the uh, regen braking going so that like when I let go, regens. This thing kind of reminds me of a Tesla, you know, it's, it's close in re closest in resemblance of anything. It's white, you know, uh, nice big screen, it's fast to tell, quiet. Probably has some pretty good range. Only thing about this bike though, or this battery, is it has this 10 gauge wire. Most people who do these builds, they do at least eight gauge wire. Reason for that, the smaller the wire, the more voltage stag you're gonna have because the more trouble the current's gonna have flowing through it. So I have quite a bit of voltage stag on here. Like it'll go from, you know, 97%. And sorry, it's cold out here, even though it doesn't look like it. It'll go from, you know, 97% to, you know, 92%. And then when I like stop, when I let go of the throttle, it'll go back up to 96%. So, yeah, man, I don't know how it could be so cold. It's like the sunshine and normally it's hot as hell out here, especially in the winter. Ooh. Another thing, this thing's got some pretty good uh, low end torque too. Like off the line, you know, it takes a second you know you know what I mean but the low end torque is still impressive I think when you're going you know 10 miles per hour and then you hit that acceleration that's when it really blasts off and that's the thing about um, hub motors and if you have dual hub motors that's when you're really gonna get some good acceleration because you got the other one sort of pulling it in front and then you can take advantage of that speed you're gonna get out of those things I'm gonna do a nice speed run here and we'll see what we get. Oh man. Yeah. Holy shit. Alright guys, so uh, that's the final update on this e-bike build. Many more videos to come. Um, I have so many plans on videos to do with this bike. Right now, I just took off the cover and I'm testing the heat of everything. Um, and actually, it stays relatively cool. The only things that are slightly warm are the controller 
and these uh, battery cables, um, understandably, and this QS273 motor holds up very well with heat. So if you have a very powerful build, you might want to go with this one. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video, probably going to be Tuesday, and I want to show you guys how I program the controller. So yeah.